Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I would like to show you how you can prepare a smart contract in the way that this smart contract can actually collect some ERC20 coins. Because you have to remember that each smart contract actually is represented by the regular public address and there is no problem that somebody actually can send some ERC20 tokens to this specific address. However, if your smart contract is not aware how to interact with the ERC20 smart contracts, then uh, it might be a very sad situation that your smart contract receives some coins that um, the smart contract cannot basically use for anything because the smart contract cannot simply uh, understand how to interact with other smart contracts and actually the ERC20 is a separate smart contract. So today I will show you how to make your smart contract aware of other ERC20 smart contracts so you can, for instance, receive some coins and then withdraw them from this smart contract. Before I jump into this video, I would like to invite you to my free email course. You can sign up by clicking the link in the description down below and you will get from me curated and beginner friendly resources two times per week. It's free and you can find the link in the description. Besides this course, you will get also access to my closed Discord channel on which you can exchange knowledge with other developers or ask questions about Solidity frontend, backend and other things. So feel free to join anytime. Okay, so now I will show you how you can actually use ERC20 from your smart contract. First of all, we just imported Open Zeppelin library, which will give us some functions that we can call and use from our smart contract. You can read more on ERC20 standard on the Open Zeppelin page or official documentation of this uh, contract. However, we just imported it from Open Zeppelin and now inside our smart contract I will prepare a new function and I will call it transfer ERC20 and right now I can submit a new argument, a new parameter into this function which is ERC20 and this would means that I actually instantiate the variable that is ERC20 20 token and all I have to do is just submit to this function a token address and amount because I would like to transfer some amount from this specific token to some other address and as you can see in the line 33 I'm able to check the balance of this token just by submitting the address of the contract which holds ERC20. I will show you in the minute how to actually use uh, this contract but first of all let me just deploy the contract so we have the address of this fee collector smart contract so we can try to send some ERC20 to this address. So as you can see the smart contract is already deployed so right now I will just uh, copy the address of this smart contract and I will go to some external smart contract on the Mumbai test network on the polygon which is not mine. As you can see this is a regular ERC20 smart contract and here the only thing is that everybody can mint some new funds on this smart contract. Of course this is not a regular production smart contract it's just a testnet so I'm able to produce as much coins as I want but please bear in mind that this smart contract is not controlled by me. It was already deployed to the network and right now I will mint for my address this amount of coins. So right now I will just uh, copy it and I will um, check um, whether I'm able to actually transfer this amount of money to the address of the smart contract. So right now I'm sending the coins not to some person but actually to the address of the smart contract. So right now if I click right you can see that I'm asked in my wallet to actually confirm that I want to send the ERC20 AVE testnet coins to my smart contract that I just deployed inside the Remix console. Of course I will confirm that 
and right now in the background we should have a new transaction that actually triggered a transfer from this um, address to the address of the smart contract. To verify it, I will copy again the smart contract address and I will submit it into the public balance of function just to make sure that my smart contract receives some funds. You can see that smart contract already received the funds. So right now we will try to transfer them elsewhere or ideally back to my wallet address. So here I have transfer ERC20 function that I added to this smart contract. And the first argument is the address actually of the smart contract, which holds ERC20 information. So I will right now just copy it from the URL and I will paste it here and I will pass it as a first um, argument to the transfer ERC20 function. The second uh, parameter would be my address of, of, of this wallet. So I will transfer the funds. And of course, let me also copy uh, the amount of uh, funds from this ERC20 that I would like to transfer. So right now I will also check whether the require works. So I will add uh, extra zero and we should get the error that the balance is too low because I'm able, as you can see in the line 33, to actually check the balance of this token. And as you can see, I'm using the variable token, which points into the ERC20 uh, smart contract. Right now I will take the zero and I will be asked again to issue the transaction to my smart contract and I would actually trigger the transfer on the external smart contract, which is ERC20. Right now, let's copy again. Uh, let's check again the balance of um, the account of uh, smart contract and we should see the zero because we uh, already um, transfer all the funds. And right now I'm able just to um, check um, the address of my wallet and you can see that I'm no longer uh, can transfer this money because obviously I already transfer it. So that's all. I hope you learned something new. You know now how to use ERC20 smart contracts from your smart contracts. And this is actually really powerful because you can construct smart contracts that collect and send ERC20s. You can build your decentralized exchange or whatever you like. Thank you for your attention and see you next time on this channel.